Behind the Brand features the people who are making things happen. Get the insight to grow your biz from experts who've done it. Get Behind the Brand. Hi, I'm Brian Elliott. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. Today I'm here with Clark Kokic, chairman of Razorfish and author of the new book, Do or Die. Clark, welcome to the show. Thank you, Brian. It's great to be here. Clark, I usually ask my guests, how'd you get this job? I went to work in 1999 for a company called Avenue A, which acquired Razorfish in 2004. We merged the two companies and I became CEO. Uh, I had started a company in Seattle that I managed to close down and lose $5 million of other people's money. One of those investors was the founder of Avenue A, and he took pity on me and gave me a job. Talk to us about some of the projects that you're working on right now. So most of the work we do is what we would call integrated online marketing. And rather than just doing advertising for a client or just building websites, we're trying to figure out uh, what can we do that will transform the experience of being a customer for that client? Uh, what can we build? What can we create that will bring the customers into that relationship with the brand in a way that's never existed before? So it's not really advertising. It's more about building things, doing things. And that's what the book is all about. That's where the title Do or Die came from. So you've written this new book. Who'd you write it for? I wrote it primarily for uh, senior leaders of businesses. So if you're in marketing, particu particularly digital marketing, you know what's going on and what's supposed to be happening, but it isn't happening. And most big brands are really struggling to transform their companies to take advantage of what digital has to offer. And a lot of that, I think, is from a lack of understanding from the senior leadership of those customers, what they should expect from marketing. What they expect is what they've always expected. Run some ads and let's sell something. Uh, and marketing is very different today. And so that's what the book is all about. Let's unpack that just a little bit. So mm -hmm. what's not happening that should be happening? So what sh what's happening is companies are still saying things. Uh, they're running ads to tell you why you should like their product or why you should buy their product. What companies need to be doing is doing things, building experiences, that causes their customers to share with each other, basically doing a better job of being a brand. And in the past, marketing people didn't have much to do with that. The marketing people took whatever was given to them by product development and manufacturing and sold it. But now with mobile, social, all the web applications that are possible, digital out of home, viral gaming, you have so many tools right. that for some brands, take Virgin America as an example, for some, for a company like Virgin America, the digital experience that they've created around the in-plane experience is as important as the in-plane experience itself. Another company, Vail, has done a fantastic job of deploying social media, not by saying, let's get on there and chat on Facebook by building something uh, that people love and that every time they go skiing, they engage through social media to tell their friends about it. So it's called right. Epic Mix. And it's a, it's a tool that allows you to track everything you've done on the mountain every day. When you go home, there's everything you've accomplished, photos that they've taken on the mountains that they've uh, uploaded to your personal page that you can now share with people. They're getting maybe two million people a year sure. sharing to social media. But they didn't, they didn't do it by chatting on Facebook. They did it by creating something that was so meaningful and so unique that people talked about it. And that, that's the yeah. difference. It's, if you treat social media as just another way to, to yammer and to talk to people, you're leaving, leaving a huge opportunity on the table. The big difference is to build things that other people talk about. But talk to us maybe about some of the pitfalls that people fall into, some of the problems that they're having. I think there's two big ones. The one is they're asking the wrong question. They're still asking, what can we say to our customers uh, to change their mind about our brand. And what they need to be thinking is, the question they should ask is, what do people hate about our category? And can we fix it? And that looks more like product development than marketing communications. So that's the biggest issue. Is it about finding pain points? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, find a, find a pain point. Solving find, people's problems. Solve, solve people's real problems. And as a marketing person, we didn't do that. That was somebody else's job. The stores people did that, the product development people did it, the manufacturers did it. Well, we used to have focus groups back in the day. Yeah, but it was all about advertising. You didn't, you didn't come back and say, uh, I can change the product. 
In fact, one of the great things, or not great things, one of the great excuses advertising people used to use is, you know, great advertising can kill a bad product faster than no advertising at all. And so if things didn't work, we always had the handy excuse of saying, well, the, the product is no good. And I think those days are gone. And that is really one of the big cores is that they're asking the wrong question. It's not a marketing communications question. It's a product development question. And then the second one is this idea, and Mad Men is a perfect example, that when you need an idea, someone's going to go in a room and stare at a white sheet of paper or a blank screen, and through God-given inspiration will somehow come up with an idea that transforms the brand. And that still can happen from time to time, but the kind of work we're talking about is, is done through collaboration. Getting technology people, analytics people, creative people, designers, product development people, the agency and the client together, operations people from the client working mm -hmm. together to solve problems and not just come up with something clever. So problem so, solving is very different than cleverness. And I, I think our business has been too focused on clever and not enough on problem solving. So the people who are watching this show, um, you know, a lot of them are entrepreneurs, they have startups. A lot of these people will have questions like, you know, how do I find new clients? It seems so difficult when it's just like the sea of noise. Mm -hmm. How do I break through now that everyone's uh, you know, I don't have enough money for traditional. Mm -hmm. Everyone's in the social channels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do I get found? How do right. I find new clients? How, right. What would you say to a small business owner who maybe doesn't have millions of dollars to spend? Well, this is the best time to be a small business owner to compete with big guys. Why? Because in the past, you, uh, there was no way you could compete with the money that a giant corporation brought. But there are literally scores of brands that have been built from nothing. Uh, using social media apps, these new web tools, viral gaming, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not expensive. And imagination is more important than dollars. And small companies are better at imagination than big companies. Big companies are notoriously bad at imagination. Uh, and so if you're not particularly imaginative yourself, if you can find somebody, one or two people, on a contract basis to help you with that, uh, that allows you to play competitively in a way that was never possible before. And I think it's, I mean, my wife is starting a small company right now and she's going to be competing with very large companies. And it never occurred to me that she's disadvantaged in that because uh, she can move fast. Uh, she can build a relationship with customers directly through Twitter, Facebook, and other applications, Pinterest. And uh, she can build a community that's going to take her company forward. And that's never been possible before. What do you say, though, when it just seems to take so long? You know, building a community mm -hmm. is wonderful to say, mm -hmm. but in reality, you know, you can invite your friends on Facebook, you can invite people to share, yeah. but there is just so much out there nowadays. Yeah. It does take a long time. I mean, the, the good news is it doesn't cost as much to start a company anymore. So you can build these things, you can uh, start these programs, you can host everything in the cloud with a credit card on Amazon. I think anybody that goes out and says, I'm going to put a million dollars into a startup and I'm going to get this thing rolling in a year, is betting on a very risky proposition. Uh, and, you know, there are, that still works for some people, but for most people who are starting things on their own, keeping expenses very low and allowing it to percolate for a year, a year and a half, two years, maybe not taking a salary, working out of your garage. Uh, you know, whatever it takes, but allowing and being totally focused on that community and allowing it to grow, uh, I think it does give you an advantage that you never had before. But you, it does take patience, and you have to cultivate it, and you have to be smart. And if you try to push too hard, the community will push back. We've been spending a few minutes with Clark Kokich, chairman of Razorfish and author of the new book, Do or Die. Clark, thanks so much for spending some time with us. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's a great time.